Calculus Math 11. Dots. Dots. Today, Chapter 2, Trigonometry, Section 2. Well, previously in math classes, you've learned about circle geometry, properties of various polygons, and similar triangles. Last year in Math 10, you learned about trigonometry, which is really just similar triangle properties applied to right angle triangles. You learned that for a right triangle like this, that the trig ratios can be given as sine of angle A is the opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. And of course the Pythagorean theorem always comes into play that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, where C must be the hypotenuse. And we worked with those trig ratios to solve missing angles and to find side lengths. We also talked about two special triangles, which I'll include as a separate video for your reference. Right now, we want to go on further with angles, and this is the starting point for our new chapter. We want to stop treating angles as fixed static objects and start considering them as a rotation. We're already familiar with this concept in sports like snowboarding, where a 540 means that you're doing a jump with one and a half full rotations, or 540 degrees. Now we want to bring this concept of an angle as a rotation into the math classroom. We can draw an angle as a rotation by putting down a line segment, or in this case a ray, called the initial arm on the positive side of the x-axis. And then if we fix the end point at the origin, and we rotate from the other end, when we stop the rotation, the arm that we create is called the terminal arm, and our angle, shown here as x, is the angle between the two arms. This is the definition of an angle in standard position. An angle in standard position is an angle drawn on an xy plane where it's showing the rotation of an initial arm located on the positive side of the x-axis with a fixed vertex at the origin and a rotation up to the terminal arm. Now here's an animation demonstrating that concept. Note that as long as the terminal arm is in the first quadrant, the angle is between 0 and 90 degrees. In second quadrant, 90 to 180. Third quadrant, 180 up to 270. And in fourth quadrant, 270 to 360 degrees. Now every angle in standard position has something else which we call its reference angle. The reference angle is an acute angle which is measured from the terminal arm down to the nearest x-axis. Let's watch. Now at this point, the reference angle and the angle are actually equal, and that's because the angle from the terminal arm down to the x-axis is just 52 degrees. But as we move out of quadrant 1, we see now that for an angle of 130 degrees, its reference angle is 50 degrees. That's between the terminal arm and this side of the x-axis, the nearest x-axis. The reference angle is quite useful when we're calculating something like the sine or the cosine or the tangent of an angle. For instance, we've got this angle here of 319 degrees. So if I want to calculate the tangent of 319, I can see that actually the tangent of 319 and the tangent of 41 are the same value except that one is positive and one is negative. And we'll go into reasons behind that in a future lesson. But for right now, I just want you to understand that every angle has its own unique reference angle, which is an acute angle between the terminal arm and the nearest x-axis. Never to the y-axis, always back to x. One final thing here to explain is this symbol. This is a lowercase theta. It's the eighth letter of the Greek alphabet and is commonly used as a variable to represent an angle of unknown degrees. Just as we commonly use x in algebra, here we use it for an angle. Why do we do it? There's not really a good answer to that other than some guy did it that way a long time ago and now we all do it that way. 
it's nice to just have a variable which we know we'll be referring to an angle. So we'll use it as our go-to variable when we're talking about angles. That's not to say it's the only variable that we can use, but it is very common to see it used. Don't be afraid of it. And now it's that time of the video where I leave you with a question to take on before next class. So until next time, keep your pencils sharp, and I'll see you in class.